and now I'm talking to Siobhan O'Donoghue from Uplift. Uh, Siobhan, could you tell us about Uplift Force, please? Like, who are Uplift and, uh, uh, and about this day of action, please? So, Uplift is a people-powered community. We're a um, community of people across Ireland who want to take action on issues that uh, we care deeply about. Um, we're for social justice and equality and we're just nine months old. Um, already I think there's over 30,000 people have signed up and are part of the community um, and over the last few weeks Uplift members have been you know, getting in touch and saying why are we or what are we doing about the refugee crisis and uh, last uh, week, last uh, Wednesday, we launched a petition calling on Enda Kenny to uh, raise the number of um, people allowed to come to Ireland and that that's now... Uh, 35,000 people have signed that petition and then on um, Thursday we launched uh, Pledge the Bed and people um, have basically been pledging uh, beds uh, for refugees and this morning that's 12,000 people have, have pledged beds. So we're saying to Indra Kenny that, that there should be as many uh, people allowed to come to Ireland as has been welcomed by the Irish people. That's brilliant. Are, are you are you for a similar question or two? Are you to have members all over the country? Do you? in every county of Ireland and. Um we know from the in the from pledge of the bed that people from every single county in Ireland have pledged beds in every in every, so every corner. And if people want to contact you, how would they contact? The best thing to do is to look at our website, which is uplift.ie, and they get every, every all the information they need there. Okay, thanks very much. You're very welcome. And now I'm talking to Wernie M- 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 Rahalik. Wernie, could you introduce yourself to our listeners first, please? Uh, I'm a lecturer in social work um, in University College Dublin and I'm on the board of the Irish Refugee Council. Yeah, and the Irish Refugee Council are co-organising this event here today, aren't they, in, in solidarity with the refugees in Syria? They are, yes. Uh, I suppose we're trying to show in conjunction with Uplift and the Migrant Rights Centre Ireland that uh, ordinary people are here in solidarity with refugees and that ordinary people want to make a difference and want, to, want things to change. So we want to put pressure on the government to take uh, more than the 1,800 refugees that they are, are saying that they will take um, and we want to make sure that the uh, the government of Ireland is a strong voice to advocate for refugees in um, at, the, at the European level so that all refugees can be treated the way they should be and have their, their, their rights, their human rights um, upheld um, as they look for safety um, in fleeing from their countries. Yeah, and just your own personal opinion, uh, uh, I know the Irish Refugee Council might have an opinion on this, but do you think the events uh, happening in the last in the last few months and, 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 and the culmination for a lot of people has been the kids the kid that was drowned, uh, like, do you think there's a political will not only to take in more refugees, t- tens of thousands or more at least, but to sort out Syria, like an ISIS, and like to m- move militarily against Assad and uh, ISIS. ISIS. Um, I I think that um, there there's more and more will um, emerging from politicians. Like we've seen, unfortunately, it has taken the death of this young child, who is one of many who, who children who've died, and it has taken that image to maybe really rally people and to rally politicians into action. So there seems to now be more will to both, uh, you know, help refugees and ensure that their rights are upheld, but also, I suppose, to to try to engage in some kind of process in Syria to ensure that that conflict uh, doesn't continue without any international intervention. But I don't think it's a it's a simple thing that we can solve overnight. But I think more political will is emerging over time. Thanks very much. <laughs> Thanks. And this time we're kind of we're in the Rahalik O'Corla Dijon in here and we're in Crosato and we're in Lermage Lakela Kupla or Hanna Fui Hefig August Dijon Ni August Homage and Shotig and Lord Lou Fartyukta Leshna Natafig at all a Gaelu no Gero Ali Ailu or Goga Sateria August Kupa Tir Ella Kali Horum Corla Dijon in here in Finchka Short Lisbeth. Well, it's so good. Good, it's scary. Hey, me show. I guess it's scary. Hey, me if we, um, if we dini, so if we mana, if we fair, if we party, if we lani yoga. I guess the fact that again, well, you know, lani. I guess dini fast, like fall wash. You giri talk to talk. Good, you need to sorpak. Um, tashi egg tefa o. 
ชิลงลนเวชินเฟียเอ่ออยู่โนมาเจลเลเทฟีก็กินอะไรอ่ะอากุสก็ก็ก็ฮอริสโอเคเซเชียร์นี่นี่ลดีนี่นิวสมินิ
So the cartoon ve Oluch um you know um Trada Rev Garev Mudges uh Sakas Kana. Yeah, I guess my uncle score cutting in the hack truck that Bavin at the horse to end the Kenny I guess in real talk sort of comparison that free. Um on tractors this small boy um say of course um Hoku Stoke and uh um con uh major small yang con carol le leshna leshna taffy. Big a shin a you know could nice ever ni small harnish uh a horse stock. No, ni small wagon a ha have con carol yo kibe arch in the wheel shit. I guess she them nice tough the nashin uh climate size eye horse are down to nice core uh a hogal I was so he knock 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 their lock um you know, Gare came shot, Tom Casho, Olvar, um, Goyes Gomlan. Hey, Gormil, my good colleague. Falter out. How's it going? Can you just introduce yourself, please, and tell us who you're from? How are you doing? My name is Lou O'Brien, and I work with Human Appeal. Human Appeal is one of the few Irish charities that actually have offices and staff on the ground in Syria, and we work in the camps uh, uh, with Syrian staff, trying to give aid and assistance to the families that in the camps that have had to flee their homes from purposes of lack of security and uh, and and if now what we think is has, is after happening is is that basically there are four and a half years in these camps with no food no proper health service no access to education and basically the people in the camps have have effectively run out of patience they know that there's nothing for them there they had a terrible winter last year they know that there's another bad winter coming so this is their only chance now is to is to is to uh, flee for uh, for uh, uh, to Europe so that when things settle down they will be able to go back but at the moment it's just not safe for them there so that's why they're coming here we've actually had a huge an outpouring of generosity from the people of Ireland in the last well they've always supported our work but in the last few weeks it's become fantastic people are just very very energized and sympathetic towards the refugees here who are the Syrian refugees who are coming here and they really want to do anything they can and we are just overwhelmed by the generosity of the Irish people you know and, uh, what's your message to end the Kenyan and the Irish government and the other European the EU in general I understand how the Irish government is is afraid of what's happened in other countries there are other countries like Hungary and Denmark where uh, political parties have have made uh, uh, have made hay on the basis of uh, xenophobia so I can understand where Enda Kenny is coming from but what he has to realize now is is that the Irish people are demonstrating in their tens of thousands that there is no xenophobia here and that there's in fact a welcome open arms for, for people here and that all he has to do is recognize that and know that we're willing to as the people are willing to take in much more refugees than he's uh, he's he's catered for at the moment and that they will there will be no political backlash when he does that there'll be political support in fact it's Michel Lourbrain and August Tommy Gubberle Human Appeal August Tommy Human Appeal Countdowner Charities a born in here and a taught in Gubbard er is Syria vain. You know, taught taught Ibrary August if a guy in Syria just to visit the tour in the Turkey. August Tom Widgen a Gubbard let in the IDPs at the town the Dini Oche Arab a Tihi Argoil August Dollar and Moher er Kush Sawalti August Tashi the Fanach down in Ishle. Kerblin Gale, Agastashid Tog in our in our herd and frame on five the iron Tashid Quillablin Ta uh Ta uh Ta Ta Asper Arigate a horse dolb Agastashid Anish Tashid Tashid Kerblin Gale Tivamwe a Gampi August Gan Dean August Gan Beerbe Gan Ospadil Gan Inrod August Anish Tashi the Tashi the Trish Ari me I knew I was shin of four which is the four goal at Tier Fane I was the dull just my ta 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 Neil Fike up Akub Tashi ta Neil and Bia Neil and Servish Pibli Akub Servish Slancha so Tashi the Arab at Tier Fane at all goal I was just the a cheat go the on Arab a glory just sail I was so water to the 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 Neil Fane I was. 
more uh, uh, rate shock polytool on Sateria and he and she didn't do knock jockey uh four forward to kill like uh on show I guess Well it's in no on five with the own right ta 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 kind of geopolitical rules at Tario, right? I guess an ish Neil Neil Own Ach na din Gnadini, right? I guess Tashi it's a illor and rod, okay? I guess Tashi do uh Nishi it's an a a fanach to air uh can all rate uh political or geopolitical Tashits and just a gira just rud simply chach soldier the clown fane. So chance nish got Tashi the Chief and show good eager suckering full of chies is Syria, I guess Tashi soldier dollar ash. Not on Syrians, right? Talk tear into my Akab, you know, touchy calling, talk a lower resources, hold her down, right? I guess, uh, it just tear into my town. I just touch it today, uh, the it, the VV, um, V, uh, service she educates into Akab, live on Koga, and it's touch it again, just, uh, uh, tepper on show. Good eagle, Hullerwood, Sucker, East in the Tier Fane, August, Felicity the Rash, Kitkincha, Felicity the Rash, Awalia, Norta, Hullerwood, Sucker, East, I can so watch her. Fiber Bay, Fiber Bay. It comes out to a Kane Tanamata or like a skate and Fage at the Raw, uh, doing K Fog, will do and show it at all. Sean already is on Dom, August Hamming Shaw, uh, Hun, uh, uh, Brewer Hall and Riltis, uh, Nismo Chapbook, uh, Akraka in Yaren. Aralio go will pub in the hair and go will see a car fancha war with Natafi on the chair exit go Haria on Chiria. I guess on Sheen to go Bacora to end the Kenny a Wadney snow over again of Lesha cold lack of hair to Europe. Bacor, Bacor do a fin a car os car a winter in Europe because Aralio go will meet in Erin. Ansar said that this more tough a home to shop. Tardinia Fulinch and Tarrell is more a town in my agna as mere dollar lease and here now on Buchel Ocean and a lee a Emil Natija Buchel Tree Bean Dish. Targar in your agam, Tarnis Bogan is more now Gavli and August. Egoni, your him a lease and here been on Tarrishin and my agna. Behordo, Behordo. Uh, Tror, if in Behordo, uh, in a Chanra cart. I guess a uh, gun a raw, uh, go knock with knock fager figure uh, uh, a raw, or uh, uh, have na na genie, na genie, a shot, na chaffy shot. Behordo, uh, Chanra, uh, a Leru, uh, do with the don 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 a genie senora. Fancy roll. So, could you just introduce yourself and who, who you're from, please? My name is Sister Breach Keenan, and I work with the Cross Care Refugee Service, which is an information and advocacy service for asylum seekers and refugees. And uh, how many refugees and asylum seekers use your services? Do you know? Um, offhand, I don't know, um, but we would have a large number that um, have refugee status. So we assist them with um, getting their social welfare payments, looking for work, and um, if they get refugee status, to apply for family reunification. One of the gentlemen I'm going to speak later, uh, we assisted him after he got his status to bring his wife and three children in here and helped him uh, to get into college and his children to get into schools. Do you know, just to ask you, because a lot of people wonder about this, are most of the people involved uh, that are staying in the, 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 the direct provision centres actually refugees or economic asylum seekers? You know? I think that's a different issue now, oh, right. if, if you don't mind me saying so. If, as people that are in direct provision are people that have come in seeking asylum and are not refugees okay. yet, okay? Um, Obviously, there would be some some that would that are in the direct provision hostels are not um, looking for refugee status. It's um, a way to get into a European country, yeah. but the majority would be refugees. So the people that you work with are refugees. Are refugees? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what countries are they coming from? You know? The uh, the people that we see the majority would be from Somalia, Eritrea. Uh, DR Congo and then the Asian countries like Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria and a smaller number from Palestine. And so when they come to Ireland there are a lot of them kind of in shock at how they've, uh, a, a shock at the life they've just come from? Like 
I think we have no understanding of what they have left as well as what they've experienced en route to get here. Do you know, I mean, if you're looking at the moment in the situation in Greece, the amount of money they pay to get from A to B, uh, sometimes, and in a lot of cases, using false documents to get into Ireland. Um, and then when they get here, their big concern is for their, we'll say, maybe wife and children in their country of origin or their extended family, because often it's the elderly then that are left behind and it's the young people that try to make it uh, to a European country. Oh, just, uh, just, just last question. Um, what's your personal message to Enda Kennedy and the government and, uh, your, and the EU about uh, what we should do with the Syrian refugees? I think um, that the government should bring in um, people from Syria pretty quickly, not putting it on the long finger. I think the number is quite small, but it's not just about numbers. It's actually giving them a safe place. Um, give them refugee status straight away, not to put them through the asylum process and try to get accommodation for them and get them um, integrated as quickly as possible. But I think we need to get moving on it. I think the other issue, there is the, the issue, I think, in Syria, it's Syria itself. I mean, if arms and everything else is going into Syria, somebody needs to be doing something about that. Yeah, thanks very much. Okay, thank you, Darren.